Another effect when we talk about orbital forcing is precession. So this is number two. The Earth. has this uh, 23 degree tilt with respect to its uh, orbit about the sun. So let's draw our sun here, not to scale. And what precession says that, okay, imagine my Earth. The axis of the Earth stays the same in the same direction during the course of a year, right? So I'm over here on this side. My Earth is tilted. I come over here. The seasons swap when I'm on the other side of the sun. And then it comes, revolves around. And when it gets back, it's in the same position. OK. So right now, right now I've drawn this as uh, here's the southern hemisphere. And here's the northern hemisphere. And remember, if you put this and couple this in with the fact that the Earth's orbit is eccentric, then when you go back over here, if this occurs at perihelion, then the southern hemisphere should experience a slightly harsher summer than the northern hemisphere. Why? When this system gets back to the other end of the solar system, that's at aphelion, we're farther away uh, from the sun. And the north gets to experience its summer, but it's a milder summer because it's farther away. And what's interesting about this is that this does not stay tr fixed over time. There is precession over the order of, uh, get my figure out here. 26,000 years. So every 26,000 years, there's this slow rotation of the actual axis. Just as a top, a top that spins very quickly on the table and the axis actually tilts down, there is a slow pr procession, slow with respect to its, the actual rotation about the axis in that system. And its precession will complete a period every 26,000 years. One would expect, right now, we are in a phase where the southern hemisphere experiences the, the harshest seasonal variations, the coldest winters and the warmest summers. In roughly 13,000 years, we would expect that to flip because of the precession of the Earth's uh, orbit or rotation. Now, again, shouldn't this be a wash? You know, you get wilder seasonal variations in one hemisphere and milder in the other, and then it swaps. Big deal. Does that change anything long term? What do you think? Potentially. So remember, the northern hemisphere looks very different on Earth than the southern hemisphere. Northern hemisphere has much more land mass by percentage. Growing seasons get longer. You can, if you have a, a milder uh, uh, summer and uh, you don't go into winter as much, that might change things. Another thing that, that you need to be really careful about, uh, it's interesting that when we do these climatological models of the Earth, very easily the Earth can sometimes slip into what, uh, what's called the white Earth stable point, a semi-stable point where you start to get a lot of ice on the land masses of the Earth. And that increases the planet's albedo. Anybody know that word? Albedo? No. no. What? Reflectivity. It's a fancy word for reflectivity. So it's like libido. No, that's something you guys have. Albedo. That's something I have when I go to the beach. I reflect more sunlight because of the whiteness. And the Earth does the same thing when it starts to get uh, covered in ice. And it's a semi-stable uh, kind of positive feedback type situation, right? If I reflect more sunlight, then it gets a little cooler. And I get more ice, and I reflect more sunlight, and it gets a little cooler, and I reflect more ice. So even though this may not be a direct contributor to, to net uh, climatological temperatures, when you drive the Earth in this kind of condition, where north is flipped, 
and that's experiencing the harshest seasonal changes, there's a bigger chance that you could have a big ice covering one season that causes your planet to slip into a, a semi-stable white Earth state. And so people look at these things, as uh, this situation, as a precursor to a glacial period, at least. Not necessarily an ice age. This one is relatively weak. 